Hey everybody, welcome to Tuesday Live with Studio R12. I'm Patty. I'm Carrie. Welcome. Tell us where you're from, tell us what you're doing, and tell us what you're painting. Yeah. I know. Hi. Hi. Welcome. I just got done painting some Halloween. It's really cool, guys. Yeah. Like, super duper cool. Can't wait for you to see it. Kind of hate that it's going to be a few weeks know, before you can see it. It's going to be a while. We've been painting all these cool things, and then we have to wait to yep. show you. And yeah, we can't we're release it too early. That. Yeah, but it's, it is nice. Um, what's really neat about um, so as I've been looking at our website and um, some of the platforms that we're on, I've been noticing that fall has started to be purchased. Um, so it's not too early to buy your fall, get your fall stencils so that you can collect your surfaces and um, get ready to paint the fall. Yeah. Once you're in the middle of summer and things are 90 degrees every day, um, it's nice to like hibernate in the air conditioning just a little bit mm -hmm. and um, cool off and you know, painting. So it was a great thing. Yeah. So today, let's talk about what we're going to talk about today and then we're going to talk about something, other things. But to, I'm, I want to confess, I have a confession. Today we're going to talk about why you um or what do you do when you mess something up and i messed up big time and i'm going to show you how to fix it i'm going to show you how to do it better and we're going to do an interactive we're going to have you guys vote on which things to mm -hmm. complete a project so that's going to be super fun i think yeah this is going to be part two of our round door hangers mm -hmm. we started it last week and we still had a few things that we were yeah. um we're trying to keep the lessons a little bit shorter yeah. so if you're on your lunch break or whatever you can complete the thought with us um and then and we also want to dedicate enough talking moments to each subject correct yeah and then um last week on our youtube mm -hmm. we released our this is so pretty if you guys can't tell in person like you know how you want smell a vision um <laughs> this is you want like up close a vision because this is gorgeous yeah you can okay. switch it over to rusty a little bit if i can pick it up this is an ikea um project and it is this was a, a a vase or a plant pot a planter yeah yeah from ikea and i think it was you know nine ten bucks and um did you get a good on shot yeah like and um so you can do so many neat things with ikea um recently i don't know if it's live yet but we put together an ikea um make it hack it yes kind of thing so um we've got um, the doormats, we've got pots, we've got furniture. Um, so if you want to see more of that kind of stuff, make sure that you subscribe and then ring the bell so that you get notified when we have new mm -hmm. things come up. Um, every time this week I am going to Columbus, so I have to wait until I travel to get to <laughs> Ikea. And so it's about two hours for me. And so when I go to Columbus, it is a travel, go to all the stores, get yeah. it done, because we live in a town of 4,000. And so there's, you know, Walmart. All the things <laughs> you know so this weekend we have a new video Ooh, being released and guys this is video. this is a whole a whole, a whole bag of hammers right um here. so patty recently got a country living magazine it was the april 2020 version edition mm -hmm. version and there was a whole collection yeah, of signs a house that they were featuring in the country living magazine and it had this sign, a sign just like this, distressed. And it was an antique. This is a painted antique, like a new antique. Um, and this sign was retail value $500. So when you mm -hmm. say you can't make money um, painting or any of that kind of stuff, you just need to pay attention to what's in these magazines yeah. and then do that. So we came up with a line of, God, is it like 16? Yeah, I, I think eventually it will be it's up to be two like, dozen. Yeah. Um, we, we kind of did this very quickly and overwhelmed yeah. all of our people. Patty yes. and I have a really hard time paring down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not me. And we were like, ooh, that one, ooh, that one, yeah. ooh, that one. We were so, like, okay, so let's just choose five. And then we chose, you know, 24. 20. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so this weekend. So there's a whole bunch of like, what are some of the different titles? I forget because um, it's been a while. We have library, we have mercantile, mm -hmm. pantry, we have a cool two part one that says railroad crossing. Oh yeah, for the railroad the, collectors. For, yeah. Oh, just, oh, and a big, a big vaulted ceiling house would be mm -hmm. phenomenal. But these signs, um, and then on here, on this last week project, now this doesn't look like a project yet and I'll show you things, but I use like the little dot stencil to put the pock marks or mm -hmm. the little divots there um, with the wax resist. Um, 
it's really interesting. We will be having new stencils that will give us tools to put the wax down. Mm -hmm. So a stencil tool doesn't necessarily have to be for painting. You can use it for wax. You can use it for right. um, making circles and banding, which we did last week. Um, the banding stencil is really interesting. We use it in a different way mm -hmm. um, this week um, to fix my faux pas. Yeah. So right. if you don't already um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, mm -hmm. go ahead and do that so you guys can see this video. It's super awesome. We have a brand new collection we're releasing this weekend. Um, you'll probably want to be on the newsletter for that. Yeah, so the way you get on the newsletter is to go to our website, studio R, the letter R, and the number 12. Um, dot com and then that will get you to that and there will be a big spinning wheel if you spin the wheel it'll give you a discount coupon mm -hmm. and it will enter you on the list yeah and um, you can only spin the wheel once yeah. if you're already on the list um, you don't you can't spin the wheel again yeah, yeah it's a really a uh, neat thing so um, shall we get started um we shall okay I get to confess and also um, stick with us because at the end I'm going to show you how to drill holes into flat projects. Okay, so let's get started. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of close-up work right here. Um, when I was painting this banding last week, I was doing it quickly and I was talking to Carrie. Really wasn't paying attention, um, but if you notice, there's a hiccup right here. Um, and it is a little blue. And the reason you use a banding tool is to not have hiccups. Okay, so whoopsie, what did I do wrong? Well, today I was getting this finished to do our lesson today and I realized how, and I don't know if you can get this guy right here, the detail right here, you can see that this is, I put it on with a round stencil, but it's a mess. How did that happen? Okay, so I'll tell you how that happened and actually, it happened because of this fabulous brush that I love for basing. But this brush should never, ever, like we, we actually have a video on how to stencil with all kinds of things. I think it's 10 different kinds of things or whatever. And I do show you stenciling with this, but it, you should not ever stencil with this. What happened is I had this on, it's probably in a hurry, which is common for me. Um, I move in a hurry, everything I do is in a hurry. So, but when you do like this, what I did is I swept that paint right under my stencil and then when I was putting my uh, banding stencil on, which this connects all the way around the stencils, this is for odd size circles. And then there's another one that's for even size stencils. And then there are sizes and thicknesses like quarter inch, half inch, that kind of thing. So you can make bands on round things and have them be perfect if you don't start with imperfection. So let me show you what I did and show you the answer to fixing it. Okay. So what I did is I was using this line, and you can see there's no way to find the right place on that line. So if I get here and I position the overlap on there, and then I position it to this paint line, nothing lines up, okay? Why does nothing line up? Because I didn't stick to my stinking circle, okay? And my circle is perfect, but because of all this bleed under uh, that I have because I used the wrong tool, then it totally made a mess. And so one thing that I have always done, I've been doing videos for almost 20 years. And yeah, I think it's been 20 years. Um, I've always showed how to fix mistakes. I've always showed my errors. So I always wanna be authentic with you guys. I always wanna be legit and out there and say like, don't do what I did because you know this is a problem. So, but how do you fix it? That is where I wanna go now. Um, and you notice when I pick up my paintbrushes, I always kind of clunk the head over. Sometimes if you didn't rinse them all the way or they're not washed completely, they might be a little bit stiff. So I always give them a little loosen just to make sure they're gonna like move around like I want them to. Okay, so I, the stencil's in the same condition as I left it last week. So how I decided to finish my band is I'm going to overlap more of the actual, I've gotta get my head in there. Sorry, I want it to be right. I'm gonna overlap that, and I wanna estimate that. I'm gonna, you know what, this is cleaner. I'm gonna go on this side and do that first. Okay, now that's much cleaner. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I have, you know what I'm gonna do? We're gonna wing this puppy. 
So this is me thinking this out loud. I didn't do this off camera. I wanted to do this with you. So I'm gonna use this graphite pencil. This is not graphite, it is um, porcelain, ceramic, ceramic lead. And um, I'm gonna make a mark and see if I end up clean. Let's see if I have to adjust. Because that's a lot of adjusting at this point. Okay, yeah, that didn't quite go. So but this is a good, good, good example. You gotta make those little chirping noises to yourself when you're figuring it out. Okay, so we go here, here. See if we feel like that looks round. And give myself something to follow. Okay, so that looks pretty good and right here so this is what happens when um, you start messing around with bleed under on your stencil. Okay, so I feel like that's a good line. So now what I do is I take the back end of my um, little triple threat and it has an eraser on the back end and I can just erase those lines off. And they also come off with water and all of that too. So I'll do that after. And now we take that and we've got it marked. So now I can follow my line. Okay, nobody's talking. <laughs> it's like, okay, it's very, very quiet. Carrie, talk. I was letting you teach. <laughs> ah, um, okay, wait. I do have to be quiet. <laughs> I'm done. I'm leaving. <laughs> Um, one thing that I saw, um, that I saw was, I know, is that that's funny. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Shh. Oh my. Um, I was swirling on something that had a really firm, solid edge, and I noticed that if I didn't take a moment on something with a crisp edge and give it a stipple, Rusty, can you catch that little spot right there? It's a really funny little spot. Um, but if I don't catch that with a stipple, you got it? Yep. Right there? Mm -hmm. I can finish that line much better with a stipple. And I just wanted to show that because I saw it right when I said shh. <laughs> Sorry, right when you shushed me. Shush. Shush. Um, everybody says we're concentrating with you. We need to pay attention. <laughs> Hence the shush from us. Like they, they, re they recognize that they needed to pay attention too. Um, I will do a giveaway. That sounds fabulous. I'm not going to show you guys this one. This is one that's hot off the press that I didn't get to show Patty before we started. When you're rotating, make sure that you wipe off the back of your stencil because sometimes your paint can get under that. And then if you move it around, you're going to move your mess around with it. Okay. Um, first, I'm going to do a giveaway to um, Elizabeth Bradburn Allard. She is really concentrating today. Um, she's on Facebook, and we are going to send you a, so a super cute Halloween round. Um, and stay tuned in the next few weeks because we're going to show you some different things to do with some of these different things. So you're going to want to <laughs> pay attention when you get this. If you guys, if Rusty, if you get a chance to pan the back wall with all these rounds, we have literally done the earth in all of these round projects. It's so much round. Um, but they are so popular and so on trend, and they're so cute. Like, round is cool. All right, so I'm just going to finish this line. I can't wait till I go on and timestamp this and put Carrie is told to be quiet. <laughs> Carrie is shushed. Um, shush. And while Patty's shushing, I'm also going to give away another giveaway. Um, Elizabeth, we will message you on Facebook to get your address. And then on YouTube, I actually have the same stencil. I'm going to give away the same stencil to Lisa Becker on YouTube. So, Lisa, I will um, send you my email address here shortly, and you can send me your address. And that's Patty's polite way of saying to shush. <laughs> <laughs> I waited. Okay, now on this last little connecty piece, 
I'm going to try to bridge and split the difference on my completely already trashed and thrashed banding debacle. Okay, and that looks fabulous. Okay, so now what do we do? This one right here is flat, and it's also a perfect example of when you go all the way to the edge of the banding tool and you have to kind of mask the difference. So I've got some here and I've got some here, and that is unfortunate. So we're going to try to fix it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up to the upper part. So I'm lining the bottom and the bottom up. And then I'm gonna stipple that to get that edge cleaned up. That also masks my lines. Okay. And then I've got this little teeny bit of an edge right there. So what I can do is wait for that to dry, and Carrie can talk. <laughs> this is going to be the Carrie Patty talk. <laughs> Patty talks and Carrie watches. <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> okay. While we're waiting on that to dry, yeah. you want to go ahead and do a vote for our next step? So that oh, we can that's a good there. idea. Yeah, so one of our um, things that we're going to do is be interactive today. So what we have, forgot we'd need time to be interactive. Okay, so to do the inside of this, um, so we got some finishing to do, and what we thought we would do is have you guys tell us what you wanna do. So we've got a home sweet home um, with this greenery around mm -hmm. it, and then that would fit on here like this, and so it's kind of in almost of the banding. Yeah, it's basically right about inside. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's what that would look like. I know it's white on white, hard to see. Yeah, I can't see it. Okay, but maybe I'll lift it up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. So it would be like that, and it would be within this band. Um, and so that's one choice. And then, oh, or we could mix and match. So then there's this bless our nest. Um, something that I kind of like the idea of was turning it slightly and then potentially using either this greenery or this greenery and doing a both sides kind of accent or doing this, maybe turning straight. You guys vote, like I literally, you are voting. Yeah. We're gonna so, do what you say. Yeah, we want, we want you guys to vote on which design. Do you wanna see the home sweet home or do you wanna see the bless our nest? Mm -hmm. And then if you type in the other way, if you wanna see just a little bit of greenery mm -hmm. or a whole, a whole wreath bunch. of greenery. And then that's what I like about our stencils is number one, they're reusable, they're durable, they're, you know, all the things, but this piece all by itself is a separate stencil. So, and the word bless is a separate stencil. Mm -hmm. the, whole, the word sweet is a separate stencil. Yeah. So each of these elements, the wreath of stuff. And while we're on that, do you want to talk about the... Yeah. Uh, yeah. So and then I can point over mm -hmm. here to some of this stuff. So for today, we are having a fun little sale um, with garden plants flowers all of that it's buy one get one i will share the link and share the code with you guys to do that but we wanted to do that today because a lot of the stuff in there you can pick and choose yeah. and put on signs like the choose happy that lena did she just grabbed a rose stencil mm -hmm. and a choose happy words and boomed them together yeah. and it was super cute and then even on our um, our boho 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 our boho um, yes um, mm -hmm. <laughs> growth chart growth chart <laughs> um, we so, and this is really cool this is done with texture base yeah that you color and then you do it through the stencil super neat effect yeah so um, sorry I'm trying to keep track and talk at the same yeah 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 no it's okay it's okay um, so today we are going to have a sale it's today only it's until 11:59 p.m. Eastern on May 5th 2020 I will share the link and pin that for you guys so that once you see some of the things that we're going to do mm -hmm. with the embellishments on these <clears throat> rounds that you can maybe get a little inspiration ideas of things that you can do and I mean they're buy one get one yeah it's a pretty cool deal it's a phenomenal, <laughs> phenomenal deal yeah so remembering when you're looking at a stencil um, I think um, so we've showed you ways to store the stencils so we've got these disc ring binder um, things you can make your little books of the different things um, really neat 
in this fall word stencil, if you make cards or if you do scrapbooking or if you do any of that kind of stuff, the word fall all by itself is a stencil. The long blessed, it's a stencil. The word family, it's a stencil. So you can do all of these as a background. You can do all of these as an artboard or you can use each sentiment by itself. So when you're looking at stencils, know that like this one is, I think probably like 20 or 25 separate word finished art stencils that would be perfect for cards and that kind of thing. Apparently I said the wrong date. Today's May 10th. Ha! I don't know what I said, but today's May 10th. So the sale runs through May 10th. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> at church this weekend, the pastor's <laughs> wife was doing her, her prayer and she was like, this morning I was the eighth ninth. <laughs> So she yeah. did the same thing. Apparently it's ca contagious. Yeah, there's there's a lot of numbers. Um, okay, so we are going to do Home Sweet Home. Okay, Home Sweet Home. With greenery. Okay, and are we doing it straight on or are we canting it slightly? I don't have an answer for you that. Oh, That's, I said May 5th. So ah, it's May 10th. I think you were I saw stuck five, on five. Cinco de Mayo. I was. 2020? Oh gosh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's May 10th, 2022. I apologize. Ah, to be fair, I think um, the words 2020 are they stuck just, in It our just head. rolls. They it just, just like, rolls out. Shoo. Okay, if you wanted to fix, like there's a little blurble right there, um, I would go about it the same exact way. Um, I want this to be like the lesson that you say, like, okay, I learned how to fix something today. So I'm going to go up there. You can see where I popped down. And then I can just give it a stipple. Okay, and then how will I fix the bottom? Because if the top is broken, the bottom is broken too. Okay, so I'll go back over to the one. This erasing right here, um, my um, triple threat is probably four years old and my eraser is hard. Um, so it is, I, I always forget it's there. I love the click eraser so much. So I'm just gonna switch to it. And get rid of our lines and and we are going to do this one um crooked offset. okay we're being bold and daring today i like it okay so we want to go okay over here i've got this little error right here it's a little bit thickish so i'm going to get that on top of my line I'm going to switch to the white ceramic lead and I'm going to, I'm actually going to drop it down just a bit to give it room for the lead. And you can see that's how much I'm in error. Yeah, right here, Rusty. Oh. You want me to go this direction? Okay, so I'm going to get out my paint. And then if you notice, um, we were talking about finishing things and we've got some wax on here. I'm gonna show you how to remove wax so that, so this is kind of like a fix it day, I think. Um, you can see how to do things in opposite or in reverse. So I'm gonna just take a flat brush. Um, our brushes on our website, just FYI, um, are all hand curated by me. They're from three or four companies. They are amazing brushes. So if you ever need a brush that's, like our dome brushes are perfect for not bleeding under your stencils. The flat is flat. It's a good flat. It does all the flat things you need it to do. Um, I don't wanna get into too many of the details because I know crafters don't always care as much as the people that do maybe fill in the blank art kind of freehand stuff. So, but if you need a flat brush or if you need an oval, if you need any of that stuff, our brushes are amazing. So I did not make them, but I did see them and fix them. Okay, so I'm gonna just load my brush, my flat brush, just a little bit of paint, and then I'm gonna put my, always with these brushes, you want your handle upward, and I'm just gonna run that brush right along to fix that little warble. By not using a round to fix this, that I didn't end up with a big, a round brush, what that will do is it will leave a big, like almost like a rut of paint on either side, almost like, you know, the Red Sea kind of thing. Um, but the flat brush, if you flat load it, 
and then you run it along the edge, you won't get any ridges. And then when you're cleaning these brushes, they can't just go in the water like you see me doing. And there is a how to clean your brushes video um, on YouTube. So I'm just gonna swirl the paint out of my brush and then I'll wash it when I'm done. But most of the paint is out and this brush is a used brush and you can see it's in good condition. So that's how you take care of those brushes. And then I try not to leave them running around here unless I know I have to wash it. If I feel good about how the rinse went, I'll just dump them right back in my brush container so that they're not laying down, they're not nose in, flattening their nose. <clears throat> okay, so let's take this wax off of here. We like the Zup product. Um, there's, I think, an Amazon affiliate link for this. Is there? Yeah. Um, anyway, and it is just the first thing we tried and it worked, and so we just use it. So I've got a degreaser, basically. So if you have a different favorite degreaser and you want to share that, I'd love to hear about that. Um, and then I'm going to just wipe that down. I'm not necessarily going to remove the product, like it's getting a little bit off, but I'm taking the waxy part out of the wax that was making the stain dark. So now I can toss that and now I'm ready to paint. Let's go. Okay, so we are doing Home Sweet Home. Are we doing it with the same greenery? Um, I, it was still a lot of questions asked okay, at one gotcha. time. So. Okay, but I know yes. we are canting and then I want to pay attention to my sanding. I've got my sanding going in bands that are long. I don't want to have them be sideways. So and I so have done that before too. Um, probably every year that I've been painting. So you want to pay attention. If you want it to go sideways, you could. That makes it kind of almost nautical. But in this case, I'm going to pick tall. So you want to get it straight up and down. And now once you have that established, now you set where you want the words. So I'm going to not maybe, so the rule is when you are doing a project and you want something to overlap or you want something to, um, to um, be slightly, you know, canted, if you do it, so say I'm, and, and this happens a lot, you want it, you want to be artistic and say you want to slightly have it go over and you're afraid so you only do a little bit. If you only do a little bit, it looks like an accident. So if you don't want it to look like an accent, you have to be a little bit more intentional and make it look like, no, they decided to do it that way exactly. Um, and make sure, you guys, that you stick around at the end. We're going to show you how to drill the holes in this. Um, I'm going to use power tools on camera. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> okay, so it could be worth a laugh. Um, that could be great. Okay, so we're going to tape. Um, taping is one of the, the security steps that you're going to take to make sure that your stencil doesn't slide around. Okay. Now I have this, if I look at my circle, this line is on this line and this line is a quarter of an inch up over that line. What I'm trying to do though, is I'm trying to center my, my greenery so that my greenery is in an even place. And that doesn't mean the greenery is wrong just a little bit more random, but because I've already given myself a band, I'm trying to make it be the same. So maybe I can move it down just slightly, split the difference kind of deal. And yeah, so I've got, this piece is touching the band, this piece is touching the band, this one and this one. So I've got it about even, looking for any kind of uneven. The neat thing about stencils is if say, this white area right here bugs me, I could take this piece of greenery after I get done stenciling this and I can put that right over there and it's going to make it nice and even. Okay, so I know I want a dusty green for this. Do we want a color? Do we want a dark green or do we want a charcoal blackish color? I'm going to get two choices. So you guys tell me what you want. I'm going to do a dusty green here. You guys can decide for the color of the letters. Hey, that's brown. Okay, and then what I can do, this is a dusty green, but it's kind of a strong dusty green. I'm gonna always shake my paint. This one, if you ever refill bottles to do the thing, don't fill them all the way up to the top because it doesn't give you any shaking room. Makes it really hard to get it moving around there. Okay, when I have my dusty green and I think it's gonna be too dark, what I can do is I can reach across to my palette. My palette currently is this creamy white and this kind of mushroom brown. So I can take my offset spatula. Carrie, 
I was making food this weekend. I was making fruit leather. I don't know if you guys have ever done this. And I had the stuff and I got out my cake spatula with the offset so I didn't run my fingers through the stuff. And I was like, I am painting with painting I'm tools working again. At home. <laughs> it was super fun. And it turned out really good. Um, we are going to do the letters in the dark charcoal. Okay, awesome. So I am toning my color. Toning is a word, um, you use it on your hair, um, you use it on your makeup, you toning like a freckle or something like that, the redness of your skin when you put makeup on, you're toning the, the discoloration or the thing that you're trying to mask, um, if you will. So toning is an important um, word to know. Um, it's kind of a schmancy word, you know, but um, that's, the word. <laughs> that's the word I've got. But um, so we're gonna take our brush and go into the toned green. I'm going to remove the paint we were talking about we had a big um first friday event this weekend um in our town and the whole town turns out and it's a wild wild ride but um we had new beginners in our workshops and they were saying the teachers were saying that people would take their brush and then they would they would were told to wipe the excess off and they just would do that and i'm like show them that the paper towel and the brush are not afraid of each other so just you know get in there you're not going to wreck your brush and you're not going to wreck that paper towel so get in there and actually give it a five quick um little especially the more you do it yeah because, because it gets loaded and loaded and loaded yes absolutely i did a project um yesterday and i was it was a big old tall porch sign and it had lots of black and by the time i got done i was almost reloading from my wet spots yeah you know so okay we're going to go in here Gonna get that green, and I want to kind of show off a little bit. Now I'm gonna go fast, and then what? What, do you, what happens when we go fast? I make mistakes, but I want to show you how quickly swirling gets you around your project. So if we look at our clock, what's our number on our clock? Twelve thirty-two. Twelve thirty-two. So I just started, so we'll call it twelve thirty. Give them a half minute, and this takes almost no time to get completely around, and that's with me reloading. Oh, yesterday I was painting and I reloaded into the water. Oh, <laughs> you can't use water with your paintbrushes, guys. Not with stenciling. All right, so what is our time? 12.33. So three minutes got me completely all the way around this once. Now, if you're not a peeker, I'm gonna encourage you to become a peeker. So we wanna look underneath, you ready, Rusty? and see if we like that amount of color. And I think I'm gonna do one schmancy, is gonna be the word of the day, one schmancy thing. Um, and we'll go dirty brush into the dark color, just to give it like a shade effect. And actually, um, watch what happens here. This is my dark color, this is my light color, and you can see these are not far from each other. I'm gonna flip my towel over. But if I go again after I wipe that all off, now you can see that that's much darker than that. And that's because I toned the color back out with the dark color. So sometimes you have to neutralize. Except I'm gonna go right through the middle. Just give it some shade. Lazy shazy. And now we'll be peekers again. You ready? Yeah, and that gave it just that little bit of depth and the edges are just fading off. Okay, so now we'll get out our gray. And so dark gray. And I think I'm gonna, this is a very, look at our color family here. This is a very blue mm -hmm. um, gray and this is a very kind of green, green. So I think what I wanna do, I'm gonna tone my gray as well. Do you hear that nice slurping? <laughs> yes. <laughs> While you're toning, I'm going to do a couple of giveaways. Yay! On, let's see, Facebook, Janice Turner is going to get the Kris Kringle candy canes. Awesome! Round, which also has candy canes and some leaves and some little swirly gigs, which are things that you can use on other projects. Love it. And then... 
I have, which one are you using? The Home Sweet Home? Yep. Mary Montoya Aha. on YouTube is gonna get the Home Sweet Home that Patty's painting today. So Mary, I will send you my email address and Janice, we will message you. All right, and we're gonna go in here. I did equal amounts of my green and my gray. <clears throat> And now that has moved it to a very dark green. I want it a little grayer, so I'm gonna pull that out and I'm gonna add green. Sometimes I make giant plates of mud. <laughs> yeah. She laughs because it's true. <laughs> okay, so now that's still a little blue, so I'll pull down a little bit more. And now I think I have a nice hammered, hammered green. <laughs> It was drinking too much at the party last night. Are you gonna drop dirty brush this? Dirty brush? Yeah, are you gonna drink? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Alicia on YouTube asked us a question, so I was whispering to Patty to see if, <laughs> if Patty was gonna do <laughs> what I yep. thought she was gonna do. So we are. Um, yes, Alicia, we are going to use the same dome brush yes. for our two different colors. So that's something that you can do when you're planning your painting. So say um, um, I have certainly been on many kinds of budgets in my life, um, all through my life, different phases, whatever. Um, so if you are like, I can only have, you know, five dome brushes and I only can buy the one set or whatever. If you plan your artwork in a systematic way and go from your lightest color to your darker color, then you can neutralize your paint and reuse that dome brush as long as you don't get it in the water over and over. So when you're switching your colors, that's a really good way to have like, um, just stretch your tools so that you don't need to own a million things. Yeah. And tomorrow, um, we are actually covering that in our newsletter. Um, I have a nice little, a nice little, uh, write up for you guys on dirty brushing specifically with a polyfoam brush. And we have a tutorial where Patty showed using the polyfoam brush over and over and over for different colors. So if you are interested in that, make sure you get signed up for the newsletter today yeah. so you can get that. Tomorrow. Yeah, the, what you're not um, seeing when you watch us live is you're not seeing all the information that we give you in the emails. Mm -hmm. um, email is just a really good place to have reference stuff. Um, you can make a label in your Gmail and, and just file all of us over there. Um, I'm getting really close to, I like to use the bigger brushes, excuse me, um, bigger brushes to paint with, and I'm getting real close to that leaf. So I wanna just make sure I'm not gonna get the leaf dirty with my darker color. And I'm using the multi-masker. This is a really number one um, selling everything. The, between the dome brushes and the multi-masker, they're like the best, best yeah. sellers. So I did this in that darker gray and I wanna let that dry. And then I think I want my home sweet home to be in a lighter color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to neutralize it with nothing. Okay, so I'm gonna go on my brush, on my paper towel, and I'm gonna neutralize my brush with nothing. Just, I'm getting rid of the extra paint, and then I'm gonna just use light pressure, and that's gonna make a totally different effect with the same color paint on my brush. Like, I hope you guys are finding this content mm -hmm. really amazing, and please give us like hearts and all that stuff, because um, that's how we know when we're hitting a mark that you wanna know about. One well, also, be sure to share our our Facebook page and our lives yeah. with your friends because a lot of the things that we're talking about they're straight up DIY. Yes, if you're a maker, this is what you want to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not all about stencils. Yeah, well, I mean, and we use stencils, but um, so I came from a not stencil background um, as early as I think eight years ago um, in a thirty year painting career. I never had used stencils, and um, picked up stencils, and I like never went back. Um, People especially love the stencils for the lettering because mm -hmm. lettering is, boy, when we have a little project that we're gonna do, we're gonna do a, a, a base off um, and we're going to, yeah, time and show three artists doing three different ways to do lettering. And um, when you see that, you're gonna be like, what? Yeah. Why? Why do I not use stencils for everything? Well, and I, we've had a couple people comment, and I responded, but I felt the same way, that we've had a couple people comment that they don't feel that they're very artistic. Oh, yeah. But <clears throat> you don't have to be artistic mm -hmm. to use stencils. Yeah, And that's what um, Kelly responded back and said, I'm not very artistic either, but I love the brushes and the stencils. 
and yeah. that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I don't mean that like um, facetiously. Mm -hmm. um, we are here to inspire you um, with um, distressed backgrounds, with um, fades, with um, texture. I've got all our tall porch signs are all leaning over here. Um, with our, you know, grunge on our skeleton um, tall porch sign with blue pumpkins. Yeah. Like, so like that's ridiculous. I saw blue pumpkins at market this year and I was in love with them. And so I came right home and had to paint a blue pumpkin, but that's not everywhere, you know? So, and then just, we pull it all together with different things. So you'll learn that way and then practice on your Amazon boxes, practice on your, you know, paper and stuff like that. Practice the techniques and get comfortable with it. And then you'll have muscle memory and then you'll be like, yeah, I'm ready to go. So, okay, let's get a second coat on this guy. And then we'll peek again. And then we'll drill. Dun, dun, dun. So you guys asked questions this week um, and Carrie was getting the questions. And um, I have been distracted. I had some classes to do and some different things. Um, and I've got a friend coming into town. And so I hadn't seen Carrie to talk about what we were gonna do today. And she, about two hours before she said, well, the people were asking about how to hang the mm -hmm. signs. And I was like, well, my favorite way to hang a sign is, you know, fill in this blank, whatever. And then I was like, hmm, let's move some heavy equipment into our <laughs> painting room one hour before our painting thing. So, okay, let's do peeking. I'm gonna dump the brush. We'll peek out under here, lift that up, and ta-da. Okay, so that's super cute. All right, so we've got this kind of dark over here from when we were showing it last week. I've got to remember to put it straight. So I instantly straightened that and I'm like, why are my lines not straight? So <laughs> canted was what we chose. Okay, and then we'll dry that and then we'll give it a quick sand and then we'll go ahead and put the brown on it and see where that gets us. I really love, I don't, Rusty, can you get right in there? This shaded area from where I darkened the paint in the middle, that looks really lovely. It looks, if I was doing paintbrush art instead of stenciling, I would have had to work pretty darn hard to achieve that result. So just dusting over just a little bit of it just makes it a thing. So I'm gonna use my lighter grit sandpaper. I wanna get through a little bit of the paint because we've got a rustic thing going on here. I wanna go with the same line as my lines on the board are. Don't get confused and put it back straight like I just did. Make sure you keep your lines straight to you. Okay, that is fabulous. Okay, I'm gonna get out the dark, the dark special wax. And did you see we are able to paint over here where this waxiness was with no problem because we took off the waxy with the zep. And now we're going to go into, this is a Minwax um, special dark. And I think there's an affiliate link for Amazon for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Amazon gives us a teeny amount of something that doesn't amount to anything, but um, at least it's easy for you guys. So we just need to tell you that to, because it's on there. It's easy. I got a rain water barrel thing. And the guy went through all this work to find all the parts to go with the thing. It was so much easier just to go to his link on Amazon and find everything I needed. So that's why we do that for you. All right, so we're just gonna rub this in. While you're doing that, Elizabeth asked, when you use a dirty brush, does your color change as you pick up more paint on, a, on repetitive applications? Um, it sort of does, but not really. It, it just really, um, just slightly tints just very subtle yeah as long as you neutralize it as long as you um watch for it you know if if it changed too much i would go backwards one step mm -hmm. and neutralize it with the other color that i started with okay so see how that is just picking that yellow it's neutralizing all the colors together like tone is almost the word of the day schmancy tone <laughs> schmancy i'm schmancy Okay, now I will take a paper towel and I'm going to wipe off the excess. But see how that unified that whole thing? It's so pretty. I'm using just a baggie as a glove, which is a really neat way to do that. And I shouldn't have taken my glove off yet. 
and I'll just wipe off the excess. Now this is good to hang outside if you don't have my front porch, which we added a 12 or 15 foot front porch on the front of my house. It's right on the top of a hill. And that wind comes off that hill and just drives the rain and the snow yeah. straight to my door. So it's, hmm. So everything that I put on my porch, I have to secure strongly. Okay, so um, that is, but if I put this sign on my front porch, I would go ahead and give it polyurethane and then I would wax on top of the poly. Okay, so that's how I would handle that. Um, so the way we discovered is you can put oil over water, but you can't put water over, over oil. And this is an oil-based product. Okay, let's talk about drilling holes in projects. Hey, we got a finished project. Yay! And you guys did it. Okay. Thank you. So, get it straight. Here's a really neat tool to use for doing um, your, your drilling. Okay, a couple ways. I'm going to stop there. We're going to go to... This guy right here is hanging on our wall and it is up there with a command strip. Mm -hmm. And so with the command strips, are they down here? Or are they yep, over they're there? in there. Ha! We One. go through a lot. We go through a lot of command strips. I think strips there's a brand new pack down yeah, there, there too. Is. Um, so if I was gonna command strip the back of something, what I would do is number one, I always cut things up. So I cut them in half. You can even cut them in squares if they're little things. Um, and then I always put the one without the pull tab on the wall. That way you can pull that away and not have the paint effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. So I peel this off. I'm gonna put one on the top, one on the bottom. So much concentration again. Okay, and the way that I do it, and this is different people here even in our office do it different ways, but I'm gonna show you the way I do it. Um, I put that in and I mush it down on the board. And when I do it, I barely put it on mm -hmm. there. And then when it gets on, on the, the wall, wall, she pushes it that's in. That's when it yeah. mushes. Yeah, and then to put it on the wall, and I'm not gonna actually show that, but I would peel that off and I would peel that off. And then I usually will have somebody standing back there in opposition and say, am I straight? Well, Here. we also have the behind the fresh eggs. Mm -hmm. We have the little tool. If I ever find these again to carry them, um, this is a little level that's just super cool that you can put right on top and it's got a magnet on one end. So having a level is a really great way. Um, I want to talk about MDF. Um, years and years and years and years and years ago, I think back in the 25-year machine, um, MDF was made out of something way more porous than it's made today. Um, and when you sanded it, when you did anything to it, it really just kind of made a mess. You didn't know what you were breathing in. It was formaldehyde. It was like all the things. So we chose pine, generally speaking, um, and so that's a big thing. Now, it's still a glued product, it's still a wood pulp product, it's still a pressed product. This stuff is so stinking hard, which is gonna bring me to the next way that you can put or hang something. Um, it's so stinking hard, you can't drill through it just about. And if you put a drill bit there, it will take the whole thing and start turning it because it's so hard. Um, it's just such a nice, dense product now. So. Um, New MDF, way better than old MDF. Um, I really love painting on it. I never have to sand it. I never have to worry about any of that. So let's talk about those things. So if we take something like this, then I have some rope through two holes. And if you are a handy person, then you can use a drill, a hand drill, but there's a few shenanigans you have to go through. So this is one of the nice ways to hang something on your door because you can have yeah. like a wreath hanger and then you can hook this on the wreath hanger. You can put some flowers right there and it's a finished, finished, wonderful thing. Okay. Um, so if I was going to use, ha <laughs> ha, ready? <laughs> That's going to be our picture on you too. <laughs> okay. If I was using a drill, I wouldn't use that size drill bit. Um, this is a handy dandy schmancy little set of 
all the bits and all of the things to do drilling and screwing and all of that stuff with one of these things, this screw gun. Um, but if you want to drill a hole in MDF and you want to um, get through there like with the bigger bit to make that size hole, you have to do a pilot hole. Okay, so you have to use one of the small bits, change it out, and then you have to <laughs> hold that thing down do a small hole, then you can go to the bigger hole. So it's a little shenanigan -y. It's a little bit kind of a hassle. I don't like it. So what I love to use, and I don't usually do my own drilling, but um, I love to use, and I don't know, Rusty, if you want to get a picture of that. This drill press is the handiest, neatest little guy. Um, it is like, as of today, um, what are we? Five, May tenth, um, May fifth, May fifth, May tenth, twenty twenty-two. Okay, so it is. You know, that's our date, and it's like hundred and five bucks. And so when the guys were moving it in here, and they had to bolt it down to a thing, we had it on a different pedestal um, in the other room, and because it's just nice to have it around. When the guys were moving it in here. Oh, my Lanta, the amount of, oh my God, this is the best drill press ever for entry level. Mm -hmm. I'm giving voices to the guys. Yes. Wrong that's voice. Ex that's exactly Oh my goodness, this is the best. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but they were doing like Tim the Tool Guy kind of, you know, moment. They were losing it over how great this drill press is. Um, it's super easy to use, and it's the one that we use in our workshops over at our boutique as well. So um, anyway, so we've got a 15-inch circle here. We're going to use the guide with the 15 inch little deal here, 15 inch circle. So they're labeled with the size of the circle that they'll band. So five, seven, nine, 11, 15. Okay, and so I'm gonna go, so we know we want between like say here, go right on my edge. I'm gonna mark and mark. And then I'm going to go mark and mark. Say Marco Polo. Okay, so now I've got that on both sides of this and decide I didn't get it quite around where I wanted it. But a neat way to measure the outside of where you're at. And I can decide that I like those. Hang on, glasses. Doo -doo. I need something right in between. Always the way. A bit more. Okay, so now I'll go here and here, and that's gonna be at the end of there. That's where I'm gonna put my, my drill holes. And so I'm gonna walk over here. Here's what we're gonna do. Um, I'm not gonna be able to talk to you over there because the, my microphone is here, and so that's not gonna work very well. So I'm going to go over there and At the base of your drill press, you're going to have a spoil board. You're going to have a board that you can drill through. So the goal is to poke through this board and you want to get to this board. And there's holes underneath the drill so that if you go too far, it'll just poke all the way through this board. But this is a great way to just have it go far enough without dinging up areas of the board, of the, the plates. So then we're going to... Hang on. What did Dustin do with the chuck? It's hanging on the side. That's on the little, little Aha. Okay, so if you need to change your bit size, they've got this little chucky thing that goes right in the front nose where the drill bit is, and you loosen it that way, you drop out that bit, and you can change the size to a different size bit. Then you turn it on, and you turn the wheel, you're hanging on to the thing, and then you turn the wheel, pop it back up, and you're good to go. So those are the steps. It's super easy. And now we're going to do it on camera. <laughs> How you drill a hole with a drill bit with a drill press 
Drill presses are magnificent for this. And then you just thread your rope in both sides and you hang it. We've got the fresh eggs. We've got ribbon through the holes. And I think we have about covered round things. We, so I do have one more question. One more question. Um, Teresa wants to know, will the command strips hold up on a front door being opened and closed frequently? Um, they make really sturdy command strips. There's a whole bunch of versions of them. I wouldn't use them on my front door because of weather. Um, so if you're on a quiet street and all of that, you can try that. Um, try it and see if it falls off the door. Like, yeah, and let us know. Yeah, like if you have a... Uh, a wood sign um, that's MDF, that kind of thing. It's super um, durable. Mm -hmm. Like, let it fall. Yeah. You know? All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you on Tuesday at noon next week.